thanks for staying with us. Now, according to a publication by Antonia Adenaya Hod, the fashion industry in Nigeria plays an important cultural role and contributes significantly to the nation's economy. The country was once home to Africa's biggest textile industry, and Nigerian dynamic brands have brought new life into the industry. Now, a generation of talents are exploring and adopting low-impact production methods and handcraft with strong aesthetics and African wax print. Now, historically, wealthy Nigerians have shopped abroad for international brands that are not available on the local market. Now, this is changing as more global and luxury brands are entering the Nigerian market, often via franchise agreement and strong online presence. The effect of the, of course, the COVID pandemic on global supply chain have further reduced the ease of traveling or international shopping, hence um, accentuating the need for these um, customer segment to buy locally. So our focus today is on the fashion industry and we're asking how can we build an ecosystem that promotes local content. Now please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 8038 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. And we have Elsie Godwin joining us. <laughs> Hello, Elsie. Hi. <laughs> the only girl that can come on this set without makeup. There's, only Elsie can lipstick. try that. There's but, lipstick. <laughs> but how are you? There's lash. So quickly, did you want to, you wanted to say something about the, as to the university ranking? Money, like, money did it for me. Oh, she did the justice yeah, for you? Yeah, she did the justice for okay. me. Because you started, okay. you started by saying thank you, good she, news, thank good you. news. Thank you. Like, and I don't exactly what are talking, talking about. about. Excuse me, 400. 400. Well, 500 and 600. I mean, it's, it's, it's nice that Unilag you know, like, yeah. um, is sort of above Covenant. It was, it was, mm. I don't know if it's nice, but it was interesting for me to see. Yes, right? it was just interesting. But I, I still Globally, maintain that I nah. love the communism that comes with Covenant and how they support each other. That community that they have created around Absolutely. Um, yeah. their graduates and the support that they give each other. I love okay, that. So, so I the can't whole alumni that. thing. But I think from what you read is based on research, right? Yes. So yeah, I give it to Uni like and University of Ibadan. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you I was not there then Absolutely. I would be worried, mm -hmm. right? So, right? Uh, but we have a long way to go. Oh, yeah. We have a very long way to go. We far, we know, but we are coming somewhere. Okay. So we, let's, talk eco <laughs> <laughs> let's talk ecosystem and building and um, promoting our local content. I mean, mm -hmm. we had had a guest that we talked about tourism, as I mentioned earlier. And, of course, we then we piggy did back to where this production is happening from the um, Ibadan. Because she deals in Adire and all of mm. those transactions, right? So... I'm just wondering, right, is it possible for us to have a, a lot more robust ecosystem in our fashion industry? So I see a lot of things going on, but it is not, it's not holistic, I, in my opinion, the approach. You know why? Mm -hmm. Nigeria has a huge market for fashion, a very huge market. I, I just wish we understood the, the power that we had because we have the numbers. We, are, we have the consumers. We have two, over 200 million people. Imagine if we understood them. They love fashion. Thank you. Imagine if we understood the power that we had, and we then really promote, yeah. right, and support local content. We would, we wouldn't be unmatched, as far as I am concerned. Mm. But I don't know if it is even possible. Let me hear your, your quick mm. thoughts, and I'll bring in our guest. <laughs> I mean, everything is possible. Nothing is impossible, right? Um, it. It, it just takes the right will and um, the right um, people and leadership to get things done. Um, we as a people as well, if, when it comes to fashion, I'm not exactly going to blame us because um, beyond the talent, beyond um, making things work, it takes us back to the conversation, which is the ecosystem. How does it affect the business, right? Um, recently, you hooked me up to the lady who does your wares, right? And I'm glad she does mine. Um, but for me, I, I, I'm still testing it out based on what she has done. I like the design, but there are some that I've used other fashion designers to make, and you realize that maybe in the next three months, um, there is a wear like the 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 I don't know what's called, but it's open. The stitches are opening. The zip. Something is just wrong compared to me 
buying um, a, 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 a ready to a, wear yeah. foreign, foreign um, brand, brand right yeah. so that is the part that i think that i want them to work on however when you then look at the cost as well it's also a problem mm -hmm. because the factoring power the factoring a you. lot of yeah. things and you can't ask people not to make profit when they are working right so there's a lot of things that makes us want to run back to buying those foreign ready to wear even when you say the dollar is high mm -hmm. you realize that the cost of buying those foreign things are still cheaper because of what these people have to exactly. deal with at home mm -hmm. to exactly. produce the amazing thing. I mean, left for me, I love Ankara, I love Adire, I love looking that way. You know, some, there was a time you said, I, I, some people say I dress like a married woman. I'm like, I don't care. I, I like comfort in my fashion, right? Mm -hmm. So if there's no comfort in it, then I'm not happy. How right? do so, married women even dress? I'll be yeah, my I know, darling. Stand, though, that, that's but, a good question, but let me hear your thoughts, man. <laughs> First of all, what are you wearing? Is it a local brand? Um, yes, it is okay. Nigerian. Mm. Okay, so for me, um, I love fashion. And um, I think that we are doing a lot better than we were doing in the past. But I think that we still have a very long way to go. Absolutely. For instance, like Elsie just said, enabling environment, too many things are out of place. Too many things are out of place that eventually affect the product, affect the people. Mm. We also need skilled hands. What we see nowadays is people just go and do three months courses and they start sewing. Mm. It's true. So at the end of the day, what you get, you have um, clothes that are made, they're not properly made. Mm. You wear them once and they open up. Mm. You know, you have the shoes, you have different things. They're not up to par, like you mm. said. That even if the you quality. go to the quality, you go to the cheapest places abroad, like for instance in the Primark. UK, Primark. Everybody you knows. go to the cheapest places abroad. Even Primark, Even Primark seriously. Thank mm. you. So I think that we need more stakeholders in this industry mm. because investment. what they need is investment. So maybe if they had the money, they'll be able to train more Absolutely. people to do better. They'll Absolutely. be able to buy the equipment they use because mm. sometimes I know that especially with fashion, you have different machines for different things. Mm -hmm. The machine that weaves is different from the machine that stitches. Mm -hmm. It's different from the one that does, you know, threading or whatever. The finishing. The finishing. So if you have one, you can only, your, your, your outfit, whatever you are making, would just be half. Absolutely. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Good. So I think we just need Absolutely. more stakeholders, more Absolutely. investment. I mean, hearing you speak, I remember that a friend of mine um, had gone to the um, New York Fashion Academy. And she said that, you know, in that academy, they teach you what fashion is like. Abroad, there is a specialized person for just button installation. Thank you. There's somebody that yes. installs zips. So because the government has provided, so she was even thinking that by the time she came back home to Nigeria, she actually proposed it to her state gov governor. See, tomorrow, now voice mail well, because they won't, guess they won't what? make money. All you sales. need to do is create a massive but they will. industry. No, that is it. They will. Because we Eventually. have the market. We have the market. But mm. let me bring in our guests, right? Mm. With a passion for fashion, arts and culture, Amobola Sonda has carved a niche for herself in making the Yoruba traditional outfit a show key and um, essential mm. in ad um, adorning brides and grooms from their engagement ceremony. The journey which she began in 2005 has grown into a profitable venture, positioning her as one of the top Ashoki vendors in Lagos State. Her works at Mobax. Alashoke. Jesus, help me. Alashoke. Has moved from <laughs> traditional to contemporary, uh, oh, impacting you. as many as are willing oh, and interested in the arts. Um, so Mobola laudably designs the participation in arts and designs and participates in arts and culture has gone, you know, unnoticed, has not gone unnoticed as she has received several prestigious awards and she is joining us live in studio. I hope I did not murder a lot of names. <laughs> I apologize. So Allah show okay. That's yeah. who makes a show okay, right? Okay, I got it right. Okay. All right, thank you so now, much why for you joining get them? Because you, you want to interpret it before you see it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. hey, you heard our conversation. I saw you. You kept on nodding and nodding yes, and nodding. I, I can imagine what you're going through. But before we even start in, uh, like delve into the conversation, you have a very beautiful history as to what even made you go into the fashion business, especially the Ashoke business. Oh. The history with your, I think your grandma or something. Do you My want to share? Or your mother-in-law, yeah. Yes. Do you want to share that with us? Um, yes. Uh, let me say good evening to everybody. Hey, so. Good evening. <laughs> um, Ashoke for me is life. 
That's the way I see it. And I, I'll say I stumbled into it. It was, um, the old story started from getting married, and then you know the way it is, you are home, you want to take care of the children, and then at the same time, I was very young, so I was working, and then I think I had, I had just a child then, and she needed my attention. We had issues, of course, I mean, the man will work, the woman too will work. I'll go out in the morning, come back late. There's nobody to take care of the Get baby at home. We had a maid. But you know the story with, you know, mm. having helps take care of your children and all of that. So we had, we had um, a fun, very funny scenario mm. with my maid then. And my husband said, well, I can't stop working. You will have to stay back and take care of the child. It was a very, very bad one for me because I wanted to work. I wanted to do something. So I remember sitting at home, I will cry before he gets back from work because he goes in the morning and then comes back in the evening. And all I have to do is just sit down and you know, be teaching ABC and one, two, three. And then one day my mother-in-law came in and I was like, ah, are you not bored? You're here alone, You're, why don't you just come? Come and learn this thing, come and see what you can do. You know, like, um, you know the way our parents are, you know, they tell you to come and do something, you go, ah, why does she want me to come and learn? I, no, that's not what I studied. This is not what <laughs> yeah. I did. But then she was like, look, this thing is not bad. And you know, at that time, we didn't have a lot of people learning craft. And in fact, I think there was some kind of stigma placed on you. They know, okay, fine, this person is going to go and learn this. So maybe, like maybe she didn't finish in school. Mm, she, uh -uh. Or she came out with a thought. Oh, yeah, we're very bad grade. <laughs> <laughs> what is she saying? Is she the only one that has a child? And then I took it up. I told my husband, I was like, okay, fine, if you can go and do it. So I went on to mommy. We'll sit together. She put me through. If you have to do this one, this is what you have to do. Today, you're not working in-house. We're going out, you're going to the fields to see the way the thing was. Initially, it was very strenuous. But then, I had to just put all my mind in it. One, I wasn't dealing with a mediocre. She doesn't take no for an answer. You can't fail near her. So you just have to put your mind in whatever thing you're doing. And I remember then learning, you know, I had to like bring myself to the lowest. When I say the lowest, um, I come into the store in the morning because then I had to move in with her. So I was living with her and then I am the first person to get to the store in the morning. So this one is not, uh, this is mama's. Um, daughter-in-law, so mm. you're waiting for somebody to come and clean up. I mm. get in in the morning, I clean up, get everything tidied and, you know, waiting for the staff to come in. So the ladies I used to work with her, you know, they were thrilled, like, ah, this one would just come, sweep, do everything. Can you imagine? And so mommy would come in and say, okay, today oh, I'm not staying in the shop. I'm going for so-so and so's um, engagement and all. You'll be here to attend to people. And it started that way. Mm. She saw that when people come in, they'll request that, ah, let your daughter attend to us. And then mom will go like, okay, fine. I'll leave it for you, let you do. So she sits back, sees me talk to the, clients. the customers and all. And then when they leave, she calls me, next time, you don't do this with a customer. You can't do this with a weaver. This mm. is what you have to do. You don't do this one. This one you did was blunder. Don't do this one again. And when you do well equally, she tells you, ah, you did a good job. Oh, mommy, ha, <laughs> this one that you've done. I they send the money, good. Now we've seen it. So I was really, you know, she carried me along. And by the time we finished, I had to go back home. And I spoke to my husband, you know. I don't know how I'm going to start this thing. He said, start with anything. You know, this is your calling. You have to do, you, you've been given everything, then make do with what you have. It was tough. When I say, because how do you go approach people and say, do you want to tell them? Because I learned from so so and so person. So I had to be going from, I had pictures, pictures of jobs that I didn't do. They were all mommy's works. Mm. But she said, do you know something? You go, get the job. We'll start doing, doing what we need to do. Then it was now, you know, my turn. They've given everything to you. Take the hook, take the line, take the sinker. Oh, yeah, get into the water, start fishing. So I looked at it, I was like, okay, then what do I do now? I carried my album. I created, and instead of visiting my friends at the banks, I'll go there, tell them, 
this is what I do now. Please tell your people if they want to get married, well, they should try me and everything. You know, I can go maybe four or five banks mm -hmm. in a day. Mm -hmm. By the time I get back, wow. I'll be so exhausted <laughs> and be waiting for, you know, that one call. And then it was just the inception of um, GSM. Mm -hmm. It was Blackberry. So, so, you know, you do the yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I mean, this is if we leave you, I think we will we, 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 yeah. we yeah. yeah. But let's quickly go on a very, very quick break. <laughs> when we come back from the break, we now want to ask about the challenges and how we can build a great ecosystem for the fashion industry because you guys are doing amazing. Right, Stay with us, we'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us now. If you just tuned in, we're discussing the fashion industry. We're asking how can we build an ecosystem that promotes local content, and Omobola Sonda is here. Um, remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-4663. You can also tweet at us at Weisho Africa 1 with the hashtag Weisho. I mean, she shared an amazing story, but Manny had a question. Yes, I have a question, but before I go to my question, I want to um, say something. Mm -hmm. You know, she said something about going with her mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. That was many, many years ago. How old is yes. your child? How old is that child now? She's um, 17. Yeah. I don't think the new generation would do what she did, you know? So that was just a very, very good, humbling experience, and something came out of it, yeah, but, you I know? Mean, just like I said, we had very cordial relationships. Yeah. So she was just like, she was like mother to me. Yeah. She is a mother so to me. That, that, so that was a good one. But now, this is my question. A, a new movie came out recently, and in the movie, <laughs> I saw the way they were doing the whole Ashuki thing, is the way they have done it forever. Yes. Like, you just have different sticks on different levels, mm -hmm. and then, it, you know, they start weaving. Mm -hmm. Don't we have any technology that can do that faster? To upscale it. Upscale it, because we still have it being done the way it was done, like, okay. one million years ago. So for that one... There's been seminars, there's been workshops on um, the Chinese bringing in some kind yeah. of technology to make it faster, but it's not like the hand woven one. Mm. Mm. So it is not that at So it, are you saying that, it is that's not why the hand woven one is more Yes, expensive. because we have, we actually have, we have Ashokis that the, you know, uh, I won't call it Ashoki. <laughs> yes. Because um. it is not, it, it, it is, it is a, a little bit degrading if I can use what? that word. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because you have Ashoki that you cannot fold. You can't hmm. then you now see that the density is so light and hmm. where I mean if we say Ashoki, Ashoki, the thing is it's cultural, it's epic. Hmm. It's nothing too she are not dashing anything to it. Hmm. Is it's been from nineteen oh oh. And then if that's what you want, that's what we're going to have. We have other tribes, we have other regions that also have their own traditional attires and all. And you can't take it away from them. Oh, South Africa, yes, you say that they have a lot of development. They have everything is going not like the way it used to be before. Mm. They have their cultural outfits. Mm. We won't say because your yes, civilization has come, then that one is now going to change mm. from what it used to be before. So this is maybe they're is using it. Maybe they're using it in a different way, which we have also implored is something we are also doing because Ashoke now is not what we used to wear before. Mm, no you really. see brides now in fitted dresses. Oh, yes. And, no. and it's, then, not, it's not a wrong sometimes, sometimes when you see them come out. I think one day last day, they have that she, she that she just, she, 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 she pieces the old thing. That's the, that's so it became very possible. Yeah, but, 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 you know, um, I also you had a question, right? Yeah, I have Go a ahead. question. And um, it's interesting that uh, Mani has mentioned um, the movie, right? Yeah. And I was going to say that each time, I love watching cultural Yoruba movies, maybe yeah. because I grew up here, right? So I enjoy watching them. And each time I see anyone, there has to be an Alash Yuki. Mm -hmm. I mean, the difference in this one, everyone is raving about is that the story is centered on All, this person. Yes. But when you watch yeah. closely, there is always somebody doing it. Yeah, but because right? that, that so the it, trade itself depicts the culture. Thank mm -hmm. you. So I was going to say, so, this is part of our culture and you've, mm -hmm clearly stated that, yes. right? So how do we also then ensure that this culture remains and we are proud of it? Because I love it. And it's, yes, I know Ashok is expensive, but when you wear it, the pride that comes with wearing it it's, cannot, it's just you know, and like you said, we have this things. newer ones now that are coming, mm -hmm. um, maybe from China and all that. So how do we even Promote um, our maintain that culture mm -hmm. but still upscale it? Mm. 
in a way that everyone is proud of it. So what I feel is the new thing that has come into it is the addition of rayon and, you know, silk. Silk has been from yeah. time, but now it's been a little bit upgraded. Mm. So you now see, we have them in like segments. If you want that, the olden day look, you see people coming for cotton, mm. which is what, you know, I'm well known for. Mm. Mm. Because really, the culture, that traditional thing it's is the, the that's the taste. It's like yeah. you having, it's like you having a banga soup. Mm. And then you now say, um, because it's being served in, not in the calabash, calabash. you know that bowl, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because it's being served in a plate and I, I want that flavor. That feel. I want that thing that, yeah. you know, that's the thing that we're it's talking the about. That mm -hmm. makes the you know, that, you know, that, the that, taste. that is the touch. <laughs> that I want. I'm not saying help me mm. put it on a platter or try to make it look Don't make different. It from, no, please. Mm. It, we're local and that's Absolutely. what we are. So, like so, now, like that. Speaking to the local now, let, mm -hmm. let us now break it down. What are the things impeding us promoting it as it is in this local raw form? So we see a lot of people doing the adire. Yes. If you go to other tribes, you see all the cultural mm -hmm. attires, right? But we don't see a very healthy um, what's it called? Ecosystem. Production is low. And that's why you see a China coming into your country and giving and you, giving you a ideas. Direct, so yeah. right. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Because production, they cannot, and, and I think that was where money was going with that question. They cannot keep up with the, the demand the, that the is mind. needed. Mm. So we would need some form of equipment, to right? Make it, to, you know, produce to multiply more, you know, those to production, churn, to churn out yeah. a lot more quantity. Yeah. I don't think right? we're in record we time. So yeah, so happens. how do we build that ecosystem? And I want us to build an ecosystem that is sustainable. Not that the weaver is being paid peanuts, mm. because that is what we see. Yes, and, and that's why guess what? Buys and, and guess what? That's why a lot of people are running away from the trade. They don't want to do it anymore. All our cultural things that we hold there, because the, the people at the low um, people that bottom, are doing the real job. Of, yes, the, the bottom of the run that are doing the real job. Enough they are not getting enough. So, so yes. they are looking at it that this thing is not profitable. I'd rather Thank do something you. else. Yes. And that's why we're losing that local content. So mm -hmm. how do we start to build that ecosystem? What would you suggest that we start to think about? And how can the government or how can the people come in? So like um, from what you've said, um, there's a Yoruba adage that says, if anything is going to go better, everything starts from the home. Mm. So um, I would say, first and foremost, if we are stable, number one, we need to appreciate what we have. Mm. If we appreciate mm. it, then we can promote it. Yeah. If we don't appreciate it, there's really nothing we can do, you know, to throw this outside. Mm. That's one. Two, we have it, but even as we don't really appreciate people come you know from international bodies and all and spheres they come in they see it they love it they make lovely pieces out of it now that one is even like a review from maybe the olden days now i'm talking about now now we have a lot of people interested in it but the interest is broken it's broken in sense that some people are coming in not because of the passion that they have for the for the work or anymore. for they they're coming in because of the money that they, they know involved. they can make mm. out of it yes it is a very lucrative business if you ask me but then that lucrative me being lucrative needs a lot a lot of improvement mm. you know just to make it acceptable like you have said then what can we do we have talked about appreciation you said machines to make things faster mm -hmm and all of that, how then do we make that sustainable? Can we afford these machines? Mm. Can we keep them? Mm -hmm. How do we run these machines where we don't have light? Yeah, that's then, what okay, so about. let's assume I, can, I even try, you know, to gather enough money and I, then I get the machine. My system is not working. Then there's no light. Then I'll now go and look for money again to gather, to get a diesel generator. Now diesel, gold. Mm. Then look for money. Tell me how I want to produce and not sell expensive. Mm. Mm. It's not possible. Yeah, no. right. So, so as it mm. is now, the local way still seems like the sustainability for us that we're looking so for. So are you losing your weavers or you still have a lot more okay, weavers so that now are willing to with work? Okay, so with the yeah. economy status now, mm. yes, we've lost a lot of weavers. Thank I'll you. tell you so why. So what? I'll, okay, so for me now, most of my weavers are Ghanaians. Oh. And you know they're Ghanaians, okay. so it's not making sense. So they, no, they come here, learn. No, they're not learning. 
They bring the craft. Remember, they have the kente. Yes, mm. the kente and the ashoke is just they're five and six. They bring the you know all their own knowledge and everything to come. Let's weave, and then you pay them that money. By the time they go and change it to their CDs or their mm, whatever, it's, not it's nothing. So they would rather. I think we'll just go back home and, and work there. continue our kente there. So that way, mm. a lot of them have gone back home. Mm. Now let's come back to our own local content, our own people. I remember going to the same, myself and like two other colleagues, we do the same business. And then we went to Oyo Town. We met this elderly man. When we walked up to him and we told him what we wanted, the man looked at us like, are this one serious? Where do you want to get that this age and time? But you know, I kept pushing, like I'm, I'm sure we'll get someone that would have this piece that we want. And mm -hmm. after going round, mm -hmm. I think we just sat down and, okay, let's eat. Even if we didn't get what we came here to look for, Amala is here or and ah, let's have you know that let's have something before we now start facing mm -hmm. man. And then the man walked up and said, What do you do? Ah. So I had to come down like Baba, this is my work and this is what I do and everything, and this is what we're looking for. He said he can only give me a piece that he has. So I was like, But Kilo Shelley, hmm. what happened now that where are all this? He said, Look. We are the ones doing it, but look at me now. I'm old and I'm very frail. Yeah, mm. I can't do this thing anymore. I said, "Bo Baba, eh, fisher ilia no, 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 transfer. You didn't, you didn't give this to the children. He said they know about it, yeah, but no, they, they also want to be in the bank. Hmm, they, they don't want to be. <laughs> Not necessarily. So, you know, so now that he said that, <laughs> yeah. I just looked and I was like, and that's where we're different. The Ghanaians, they send their children to school. Once you finish SSC, you come back. You have to learn that craft. Hmm. You have to know. So you see, one of them will tell, ah, um, Oga, we need um, a lot of people who that they're going to work for us. Who and who is coming? And then they'll tell you, four of my brothers are coming out of school. They're very good with this craft and everything. If you give me a go ahead, madam, I'll, I'll tell them. them to come. So you now start wondering, you know, ah, they're just leaving school. When did they have to learn? Hmm. Because that is what they sleep. They wake up too, mm. so they eventually have to know what the craft and what yes. everything is. But at our own end, we're not, you know, we're not passing any. Well, just we're not the kind of warm -up. So that's yeah, what is, a, is really, really disturbing. Mm. Then two, it is very stressful. Now you ask me, ah, do you want any of your daughters or anybody to take this thing off from you? No. One part of me says, no, wow. please let them go and have a life. Wow. And then the other part says. Ah, for the sake of culture, mm. you can't just end it here. Let something go on. So we leave it to, all right, then if they have a passion for it. But you know, you can actually instill that passion in them. You can tell them what yeah, it will you be. Can. You, can, you, know. you can help them mm -hmm. build a passion around what mm -hmm. you have so that the thing does not just die. Mm. So that's just the thing. Oh. You know, because now listening to you and the story about the Ghanaians, oh. what if our, our people were a lot more deliberate? Maybe we say that right from secondary school, this should be part of a, like the way you go and learn home economics, you learn technical drawing. That this Why should be can't part, we yes. add that to the uh, curriculum? That would be really Introduce nice. the children. And guess what? Some of them will fall in love with it. I oh, mean, that yes. was how my son started doing beading. Mm -hmm. ah, right? He started um, making beading. Adire, always bead, Adire, you know? Adire making is part of their, I think they have a general yes. course now that they do that. You have to, no, really? you have to you take have to learn one of those tie and die. You have, yes, you have to learn either tie and die or you do agriculture or do catering practicals or something. Mm. Then there's the stitches one where you saw this different kinds of stitches. My of daughter, my, my daughter, the eldest of my daughters, did the tie and dye thing. Mm. I remember her coming home to say, I need to buy this, this. And in my mind, I was like, what do you need these things for? She said, oh, she learned this and all. And then, you know, with this new age, you can go on YouTube to learn Anything. a thousand and one. Although I don't think you can do that with Ashoke because, <laughs> but then with yeah, all them tie and die with designs, you can go online and learn one thing or, you know, the other. When she started doing it, before we knew what was going on, she had turned, you know, a t-shirt at the red thing into a business. Mm. And I looked and she would tell us, oh, when we call her in school, and, okay, we're coming for open day. What do you want me to bring? Do you guys need money? Bring she said, mommy, don't, and, no. and she tell you, mommy, don't worry, oh. We don't need money. Mm -hmm. I still have money. Then I'll be like, come. Where did you get the money from? Oh, no, I sold 40 of those shirts. And wow. <sighs> so the next time she was going to come home, I sat her down. I was like, come. This is where it starts Let's from. Let's structure it. Is, but you know, that is you channeling a passion towards that craft mm -hmm. for that child.
So I think it's also mm. about intentionality, so, like you have said, because what you just mentioned, yes, I did tie and dye in school mm -hmm. too, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, that's ended. but it didn't become a business for uh -huh. me. So, so um, these things happen. I think it's in secondary school at about GS3 or so. Um, there's the fine art. They break you into parts and you choose the one that uh, works for you. Some people actually became caterers from that um, class, right? Mm -hmm. So it's also intentionality on the part of the parents and yes. how we um, talk to our children and what we tell them making money is on the about, mm -hmm. right? Um, I like when you spoke about the, the amount they are being paid. Are we are we giving yeah. them are we, the yeah, right are we to value? Because at the end of the day, them. yes, you've mentioned a particular brand. Now we know how much it costs to be able to be adorned by that brand mm -hmm. when it's time for your engagement and all that. But then, if you, I, I mean, I don't know what's happening there, right? But if you then check the value system and check those that are really at the core of this business, right? Are they really getting? And that's why they the keep running for away. Money? Yes. Because if I I won't get it, and I know that if I go and sit in a bank, like you mentioned, I will probably yes, get no. a bit more money. I'll probably go there. Like you said, it's also stressful. So yes, I think yes. intentionality on our part and the government also needs to step in. Absolutely. Because it's not, it's not something you see, for, we can for, do Sorry, our, sorry I'm really. cutting in on that one. For mm -hmm. the government coming in and all, mm -hmm. if we just have our basics. Light. Yeah. Basics, light, and if we have those ones, I'm sure productivity will be on the Absolutely. top. Mm. But, you know, the fact that we have to run... Like practically everything via generator, and then you're now looking for diesel. Mm -hmm. Before you know what's going on, um, tax is already flying on you. Mm -hmm. Everything is just you know left, right, and center. And you wonder, look, you guys are not giving me anything. I'm trying to push my way through, and then you're still coming again. You want to, you know, I, I like where we are going with this conversation, but I I cannot live here without trying to understand how we can sustain this ecosystem. Because now, you made, some, you made mention of something about that, Baba. It struck me instructively. A lot of people have died, and they could not move those crafts again because mm -hmm. the next generation mm -hmm. did not pick it up. So what are we doing intentionally now? Should we say that, can we start creating the YouTube videos if they don't exist? Sorry to button, it's not even just mm -hmm. about this craft. I remember when I went to the same ECN, that's where we have the... Yes, um, that's where everything is. The, there, what's it called? The isolated um, lake on a rock, right? Mm. Yes. That's the same place. Yeah, you said The so. man who was taking us through and explaining the history and all he was very frail and he was saying that he was also worried that if once he dies, he dies, there's that no transfer of knowledge that understands everything he has been there's no about. transfer of knowledge so i mean this because is why i say that our labor so this is why i say that the low. ecosystem has to be built you know why because if we are very intentional about building that yeah. ecosystem it means that everybody knows that your work is dependent on my work, your own is dependent. So everybody at every point in time is making sure that Taking things, position. yes, things are flowing, information that needs to be passed is being yeah. passed down mm -hmm. and all of that. Because if we do not build that ecosystem, tomorrow what happens if you say, okay, you know, and your children say they're not picking up the business. Was that a viable business? Yes, it was a of viable business. Why did it not move beyond? And this is why they say that companies in Nigeria don't go up to 100 years, right? With the principal of the, the business decides to say, I'm retiring, or maybe That's a demise business. or something. That's, That's the end of that mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. So, And I'm seeing this happening, especially with our local content when it comes to the fashion industry. So if you wanted to even, maybe like in a, in a minute or two, like give a, a kind of an idea what sustainability would look like if we wanted to build this ecosystem. What would you suggest? Well, just like you said, we'll implement in schools. Let's start with that one. Good. Probably we'll make it one of the core craft yes. subjects for students in school. And then for businesses that are established, mm. let's start taking in interns. Hmm. Pass hmm. that knowledge on to somebody else. Let people, you know, learn something. Let them take something off you. Ashoki is very vast. It doesn't just start and stop at weaving. Yeah. And um, you see some people, okay, fine, your interest might be in weaving, while mine is in designing. It takes, I mean, it takes a lot to sit down and take up somebody's um, ashwebi and then decide, okay, I need to Design. craft out something for this one. You're not just going to look at it and say, this is what befits this or this is what suits this. It takes a lot of thinking. Or oh, why would I not want to put stripes on this one? Or I, I think a plane will work on this and this shouldn't work on this. So if that's the part that you like to do, then focus on it. You know, that way, the market starts getting broader. So it starts getting bigger because we now have departments. 
We have, we have people that can come to you to train and do all of Oh, this. yes, we do that. People, mm. A lot of people have come. Some people have gone, and they're doing well by themselves. They're running their businesses. So how long so, will it take to train? Because let's say I don't they look saying that this uh, no, fine. Now, now. It, now well, it depends, it depends on what you're coming to, yeah. to learn. Mm. I mean, once you feel you've gotten enough knowledge to mm. do... I have, a, a, I have a particular boy that was with me for like five or six years. By the time I was leaving... And I told him, okay, now that you're going, what are you going to do? At first, he was like, I don't know. I said, he said, you don't know. Go and think about it and then come back. Okay, so now that I don't know answer mm -hmm. was based on, ah, ma, you, you are big now. Mm. How do I want to start? Is it the strip I want to put out and people will believe that I'm doing something? And again, you know, that's why I said appreciation. Mm. People come into the store, if you don't have enough display or you don't have enough pictures that you can throw around, they don't believe you can do it. We need to start believing, you know, we can, although it is Take very dangerous so because you see some people, people, to, people are uh, don't yeah. blame them. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so I, I, think, I think what you can do, you know, to I mean, help them is also to act like a, what do they call them, godmother, mm. the way we have godfathers That's like what in your politics. mother in London did. Yes. Just oh, yes. Like so mother. when yeah. they come, exactly. yes, uh, you know, fine, with that one too, there's, there's restriction. Mm. I'll tell you. That's why I say, you know, from the mind, one, loyalty, two, the passion. If I have a passion for your kind of business, and I know mm -hmm. that, yes, I'm learning from this person, I don't intend to or pray that I stop your business so that I can grow. Mm -hmm. If you're coming in, yes, with that kind of intention, you don't expect me to be free like my mother-in-law was free with me. <laughs> so I won't be stupid. Of angles. There's a lot yeah, of angles to you, you would uh, you wouldn't expect that I'll be open or very free with you, mm. like the way she did with me. Mm. I knew, you know, I understood she what she knew the that the to... business was going to be within the family, so she gave you everything. Uh, yes, she gave it to me. <laughs> she gave it to me if we want to sustain, the but of guess what? If we want to sustain, we would this, have to do that. It must be ready to be it's, 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 but let's take comments quickly because we run after time. Okay, so yeah, you must take that risk. Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters. Um, your guest mentioned of accepting what we have and building on it. This business is very lucrative and vital because people who are fashion conscious will want to be current and know what's in vogue. There's a major challenge in the fashion industry when you talk about unavailability of power to run a sh fashion shop. Oh. This alone slows down business and creates problems. My name is Daniel Ilo. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. I mean, this is, I mean, it's been a fantastic conversation. I would just want to implore the government, right? Just like the way you're opening media cities, right? Open mm -hmm. fashion cities. You know why I say so? If we have like a government employing tailors, employing weavers, employing yes. this, employing that, mm -hmm. guess what? You're creating a beautiful ecosystem for the fashion industry. So I don't have to go and open my own shop. I just have my design. I come to the, 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 the place and mm. create and go and sell. I suppose just having pe people working in silos, right? But thank you so much. We ran out of time. We had a fantastic conversation. Thank you, Manny. Thank you, thank Uti. You. Thank you, Mobola. Mm. Elsie, my darling. <laughs> <laughs> Before we go, I show you follow us. I mean, we can move. Follow us on Instagram and we show everywhere, meter. TikTok, everywhere. Follow us. Um, imp more importantly, mm. follow the engagements and interactions online. Remember to like and share. Invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote, here it is again. Demand quality, not just in products you buy but in the life of the persons who made it Absolutely. right very very important we'll see you guys live on monday at 8 p.m as we bring another great conversation to your screen enjoy <laughs>